So, did you know in Windows 11 25 H2, Microsoft is actually releasing a new updated start menu which looks exactly like this. Now, this is the new start menu that is going to be eventually rolling out in later feature updates in Windows 11, or as Microsoft calls it, a gradual rollout. Now, this will be coming available in later on earlier or possibly in earlier of 2026. However, you can actually enable this right now using something called Vivetool, which can be downloaded for free from GitHub. And again, I'll put all the links down in the description box down below and also a big shout out to the person who has made this tool. And again, it's very easy to do just simply using a quick command. Now, before we do go ahead, quick introduction anyway, my name is Matthew from Matthew's Tech Hub. Welcome back to the video, everyone. Hope you're doing well. So without further ado, let's roll that intro and jump straight into the video. Okay, so as you can see, we're now back at the Windows 11 desktop. Now, before you do go ahead and use this tool, it's just worth advising that any experimental features, which obviously this tool does enable, can break or cause problems with your system. So if you are gonna be enabling this new Windows 11 start menu, please do so at your own risk. I take no responsibility for causing any problems with your system. Now, as you can see at the moment, if I just jump into my start menu, you'll see that we are currently running the old start menu. So this is what the previous start menu looked like before and what it probably looks like on your system. As I said, the new one is currently experimental. So if we actually jump into settings and I'll just show you that we are running the Windows 11 25 H2 build as well. Um, if I jump into system and about, and if I then just scroll down, just down here, you'll see that we are currently running Windows 11 Pro. Um, obviously, it was installed a couple of days ago, well, a little a few months ago, actually. And we are also uh, running this version of the OS build, which is 26220.6772. So jumping right into it, what we now need to do is we need to go download a tool called Vive Tool, and you can Google it, or if you can check the description box down below, you'll see that I've put a link directly to their site. Now, as soon as you go to their site, it'll take you to this page here. And this is a tool so you can actually enable hidden features that are in Windows or even if they are currently in a an AB feature or an experiment. So it's very useful, but as I said, just be very careful because if you do enable the wrong feature or if you do um, obviously maybe enable a feature on your system, it could cause problems. So again, just make sure that you have got a backup of your system before going ahead and making major changes using this feature. So what you can do is if you just scroll down on the right-hand side, you'll see right here it says releases and it's got the Vive tool along with the version number. Now, what you need to do is down at the bottom, it says it's got you've got a version for Intel AMD and also Snapdragon. So make sure that you are downloading the correct version for your system. If you've got an Intel or an AMD processor, you'll want to download this one here. Or if you're running an ARM-based PC with a Snapdragon processor, again, you'll need to download this one right here. So I'm going to download the Intel AMD zip by clicking on it. And as soon as you click on that, you'll then see it just downloads onto your system, which is a zip folder. Now, what you need to now do is just come out of this and then jump into your file explorer down at the very bottom. And if you then just jump into your download, you'll now see that we've now got this folder that we've just downloaded. Now, we're going to click on the folder and then go to extract all and just make sure that this checkbox here is ticked, which says show extracted files when complete. Then click on extract down at the very bottom and it will then show you the folder with the files inside. Now, what we need to now do is we need to actually copy the path of this folder and the files. So if we just click on the top, right in the top of the File Explorer window at the very top right here, and you can actually right click and then go to copy. If we then just come out of this completely, we're now gonna go down to our search box and just type in CMD, which is for command prompt. You can then run this as administrator, which you will need to do. You can do that by either right clicking on it or just on the right hand side in the old start menu, you can just click on run as administrator just right here. You'll then be prompted with a UAC prompt or user account control. If you have it enabled, just select yes. It's just because you're running this as an administrator. Now, once you're in the actual command prompt window, there is a couple of commands that we need to run in order to enable this new start menu. So the first one is we need to change the command prompt to the directory of the folder that we have just downloaded. So you can do that by typing in CD and then doing the quotation marks and then pasting in that path that we copied earlier and then pasting in the quotation mark to close it off there. Now I will put these commands in the description, but just bearing in mind that they won't work because the username for your account will be different. So again, I would just recommend just copying them directly rather than using the commands below. Now once you've entered this command, just hit enter and it will then change the directory. As you can see, we're now working in this directory. And the next command we're gonna use is the following. So it's vive tool forward slash enable forward slash ID 
colon, and the most important part here is that you enter this ID exactly as it is right now, which is currently 47205210. And then once you've entered that, you can just hit enter, and then it will then say successfully set feature configurations just right here. Now that means that it's all gone through and it has now made that change. Now once you've done that, you can just close the command prompt window, and you'll now need to just restart your system just by going down to the start menu, going down to the power icon and then just clicking on restart. And I'm now gonna let my system restart and I'll be back with you guys in just a moment. Okay, so once your PC has restarted, you can check to see if the new start menu has changed just by clicking on the start button at the very bottom. And then once you click on that, you will now see that the new upcoming start menu is now here. And again, this is a start menu that is gonna be coming out I imagine in the next couple of months as Microsoft do eventually roll it out. Now, there is a few things to bear in mind with this new start menu, which I'll run through, is that it is still an experimental stage. And I think, as I said, there is still some improvements that I think Microsoft will eventually do once they gain the feedback from the community. First off, major being, which all the elephant in the room right here, is that you've got all of these categories here. So as you remember on the old one, there used to be a button in the top right corner, which you could click on, and it said all, and then that would then show you all of your apps and software on the PC. However, they're now all categorized into like mini folders right here, which if I click on one, for example, this productivity, you'll see that it then expands everything that is classed under productivity. Now these are automatically categorized by the start menu, and also you can drag things into there as well. However, you cannot create your own categories, which I think is a major feature that Microsoft really needs to add because I just don't really see the point in using it if you can't create and customize your own categories. However, you can change the view just right here in the top right. So you've got category, you can change it into a grid. So it looks fairly sim similar to the old way, or you can do it as a list as well, which also looks like the old way um, when you used to click on that button in the top right hand corner. Now there is a few customization options that you can do. So if you actually jump into system settings, and then go down to personalization and then scroll down to start just right here. You'll see that we have got a few options, just obviously ignore the activate windows just because again, this is just a demo environment, but it doesn't affect anything I'm gonna be showing. So you'll see that right here, you've got show recently added apps. So any apps or software that you install on your system automatically will be added into that start menu. Maybe you don't want that, so you can just flick that off. You've also got show recommended files in start, recent files in file explorer, and items in jump lists. Again, I wouldn't want that, so I turn that off. You've got recommendations for tips, shortcuts, new apps, and more. Again, more rubbish, I just wouldn't want that on either. And you can also have websites, uh, well, show websites from your browsing history. So if you do store your browsing history on your PC, obviously it will show those sites that like, directly in your start menu. So again, you can also turn that off as well. And there is a few more settings if we just scroll down so you can show most of the used apps, so apps that you use most of the time. Again, that might be quite handy if you want to quickly get access to those applications. And there's other things as well, like showing account related notifications. Um, and also you can change the folders that appear um, in the start menu as well. For example, if you want like your downloads or your documents to show. So there's a few other things in there as well, which was also under the previous old start menu. But let me know what you guys think anyway. Will you be using this start menu? And obviously what do you think of the new design? Personally, I do quite like it, but I just think the Microsoft really needs to add the option so that you can create your own categories. But again, let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. Please also hit that subscribe button as well to continue supporting my channel. And obviously a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently as I've now just hit 6,000 subscribers. So again, thank you very much to everyone to, for continuing to support the channel. And please also hit that like button if you found this video helpful to get it into YouTube algorithm so that we can also support other people who might be looking to also do this change. And as always, thanks for watching guys. Until next time, I'll see you then. Bye for now.